Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurveda healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the show. We're here today with the weekend edition of the Cabral Concept, where we answer your questions each and every Saturday and Sunday, every week now for five years running. We've answered thousands upon thousands of our community's questions. Hopefully, this is a place that you feel safe to be able to ask your question, feel like you're going to get unbiased uh, answers to your questions and give you a good place to get started on your wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging based questions. So that's that's exactly what we're going to do today. Um, if you ever want to read along with the questions, you can go to stephencabral.com forward slash 1779 for today's show. stephencabral.com forward slash 1779. And um, as always, I have your questions right here on my trusty iPad ready to go. And without further ado, let's get into this weekend's first question. My goal, by the way, is to answer six questions Saturday and six questions Sunday to get one dozen questions, 12 questions a week from our community. Okay. First question is from Heidi. Hi, Dr. Brawl. You are such a blessing. No other podcast comes close to the comprehensive education you provide. Thank you for your dedication, selflessness, and diligence you provide to transform our lives. You are the GOAT indeed. Thank you, Heidi. I appreciate that. Um, it says, I would like your feedback on the following items. Is agar safe as an additive? I purchased an organic coconut yogurt that has this ingredient. I have ferritin levels four of 30. Hair is falling off for four years. I run a total iron binding capacity. Iron level is high as I genetically am prone to hemochromatosis. I started innate iron from your site, but fear this will increase iron level, which would increase oxidative stress. I walk daily 10,000 plus steps, do yoga, eat organic, have cold water fish three to four times a week, eat lots of veggies, and my starches include brown rice, Japanese yams, purple tea potatoes. I'm 5'6", small frame, weigh 120. After 12 to 13 hours over an overnight fast, I take my products formulated by Equilife, my DNS, my magnesium, my thyroid, minerals, fish oil, cow mag. Appreciate suggestions on the next steps to increase ferritin level without increasing my iron levels. Thanks for your insight. All right. So I get it. I understand now what you're talking about. All right. So we're talking about absorption. We're talking about utilization by the body. Now, so I want you to look at a few things. So you asked a couple of different questions. I'm going to put hair loss to the side for a moment. And here's why. I have a podcast on why women lose their hair. It's different than men. So what I'd like you to do is go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast and check out that episode on women's hair loss. Okay. If you ever can't find a podcast that you need, always ask. You can simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash uh, sorry, it's just a Cabral support group.com. That's our free Facebook group. And I was also thinking at the same time, you can also text us now. And that text number is, let me grab that for you. I don't have that off the top of my head. It's not a number I have memorized, but that text number, and again, this is not like this question would be a bit long for that. But if you need to say like, Hey, where, where's the uh, podcast on women's hair loss or whatever it might be. What's the best lab to test for iron, et cetera? Um, you could do that. So the number is 617-485-0613. All right. So let's go to your questions on iron. I want to look at cofactors. That's a big thing for me and why the body is not utilize this, utilizing this the proper way. I'm always going back to my B vitamins as well, B6, folate, and definitely B12. Like those are big ones that I'm looking at. So yes, natural iron, okay. I'm okay with that. I'm looking at that. That's something that I want to see. But I'm also looking at heavy metals. I'm looking at stress, different factors that can bind and not properly allow for good uh, ferritin utilization. What else am I looking at? You're already taking the magnesium, so I'm really happy to see that as well. Um, you're taking your omega-3s. 
I'm assuming you're exercising. I don't see it on there, but I know exercise is going to help with the uptake um, as well. And then you also are using the innate uh, iron that you talked about. Well, so the reason that I want you to say, oh, okay, like I'm okay with that, but we'll need to make sure that we run your iron levels again, just to make sure that um, total iron binding capacity isn't getting too high by using that, even though it's a food-based iron supplement. So that's where I would go with this. That's exactly where I would look first. And, um, and I would look at other forms of oxidative stress, heavy metals, gut issues, those being some of those. And you can run the starter kit to make sure that you're getting, you're seeing all those heavy metals as well as your particular nutrient levels as well. It's a great question, Heidi. And um, for more in depth, I would definitely uh, work with a specific health coach as well. And you can do that right over at Equal Life, uh, which is equa.life, or with um, our integrative health practitioners, and that's integrativehealthpractitioner.org. You also asked, I saw that you wrote about uh, agar as well. Um, Agar is essentially, it comes from red algae, I believe, red seaweed. It is going to be actually a little bit higher in iron, so maybe that's why you're using it. It's a vegan gelatinous-based substance, right? It's an extract essentially from seaweed. So it's used as a thickener in yogurts and other products. Um, it's used in gummies as well. It's actually a gelatin used in a lot of vegan gummies. I'm okay with it. So we'll put it this way. I'm okay with it. It has magnesium, manganese, iron. Uh, it has some nutrients in it. There's no doubt about it. It's actually been shown to help with uh, certain, certain issues as well. So the only thing is I wouldn't go overboard with it. Like it can help with anemia and it can help with certain things like that. It's just not my go-to. I wouldn't purposely seek out that product. But if it was in something and I wasn't using that much of it and I wasn't having any particular issues, issues, uh, then I probably wouldn't have as much of a problem with it. You do need to drink a lot of water with it because it does swell in your stomach and intestines. All right. So hopefully that answer is helpful. Melissa's up next. I hope this message finds you and your family. Well, I'm writing in again about my toddler, Bob. Uh, the, the kid with seemingly determined eczema gut food issues. After running the big five plus the stool, praise be, we've got a lot to work on. I have a few questions though. We are working on balancing deficiencies first. So we've got some time to wait for your teachings. One, we use a very diluted topical steroid on him every day. Besides taking it slow, when we start the protocols, when he flares detoxes through his skin, do we increase the topicals? Or would that be counterproductive? Do we stay the course with them, start to wean at some point, or just cold turkey throw them out? I have a lot of fair hair. His skin was unlivable before, even with the elimination diet. What are your feelings on occasional Marilax? Okay, so this is the second question. He leans toward constipation very easily, and this works best with least dermal reaction. I'm wondering if it's common to be reactive to even just supplements. We haven't even started protocol yet, and he's already inflamed. Not even enough to increase topicals, though, because we just keep backing off them slowly and slowly going back up. At what point do we just go ahead and jump into a protocol? Thank you for the protocols and the help. Okay, and hope. All right, let's see here. Well, it's a lot of good questions. So let's go through it. How old is Bob? Bob, Bob is a toddler. Okay, let's say Bob's somewhere around three years old, okay? So I actually believe that you wrote in with this question on our Facebook Live events, on our, our q and I'm pretty sure I remember this. Um, so let me give you just some background. When a child has intestinal permeability and has a very sensitive gut, he or she, what can happen is that when you start to use herbs, which are in the children's CBO or the regular CBO, there can actually be some type of flare up with the skin. They're just very sensitive. So the issue becomes this, at what dosage is it okay? So for someone that's very sensitive, all we do is we start with only one product and only one capsule, that's it. And we say, how does that go for three days? No flare up, good, let's go to a higher dosage. Does that work? If good, yes. Then we add in the next product at the lowest possible dose. And since you really can't do less than one capsule, or you could empty it for half a capsule, that's where we start. So that, again, I can't give you medical advice, but that's certainly where I'm, I would start. Um, what else can I answer for you? Okay, so I can't give you medical advice, and, and talking about topical steroid creams is medical advice. But if it was me, what I would do is the lowest possible dose, try not to ramp up 
cortisol by using corticosteroids and also not suppressing the skin's reaction because we're trying to remove a lot of this stuff from the body. So the goal is always lowest possible dose. Um, that's, that's essentially what I would do if it was me or my child and working with your PCP as possible to, to lower the dosage. So at some point, again, you have to heal the gut. You have to heal it. Like it, you just have to heal it. The anti-inflammatory diets, you run a food sensitivity, you remove the food sensitivities and you move forward. Like that is, that's absolutely, um, again, at the lowest possible dose. Now you had a question about Miralax, not a Miralax advocate. The, the ingredient, the active ingredient in Miralax, um, is it's escaping my mind. I've already answered this before. Polyeth polyethylene glycol, I believe. Polyethylene glycol. Yeah, it's something like, yeah, 3350, something, something like that. Polyethylene glycol. Now, the issue is it's the byproducts are used in antifreeze, and that's not an exaggeration. The FDA actually did... Um, uh, cited Miralax for that about a decade ago. So I would be careful with that type of product. That's absolutely a synthetic. That's not something ideally that we're going to use. So you use it only in like absolute circumstances that you just have to. What we typically would use would be some magnesium um, citrate, like in the natural calm that we recommend. So the magnesium citrate is really nice. A smaller dosage, obviously, for kids. A little bit of alkalizing vitamin C can work for children. Uh, for sure. We don't want to go overboard, but yeah, I mean, you have to use your best judgment again. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. Thank you, uh, Melissa, for writing in. Sarah's up next. Hi, Dr. Paul. Thank you so much for all you do. If your daughter's regularly woke up in the middle of the night struggling with breathing issues, is there any natural remedies that are effective that you would use before reaching for the inhaler and dialing 911? Also, are breathing issues asthma a sign of a vitamin or mineral deficiency? Thank you. Would really appreciate your thoughts. Okay. So first things first, let's Let's state this and let's give Sarah some help. So we've got a lot of medical questions today. So not being able to breathe, especially as a child, when you wake up in the middle of the night is a medical-based condition. So I want to be careful. I can't give you medical advice um, or treatment protocols for this type of thing. However, asthma is an increase typically in inflammatory cytokines, specifically affecting the uh, lungs, breathing passageways, also a TH2 dominant immune factor. So there's a lot that we can do and a lot that we know about in order to help rebalance the body. Calcium is very important for children with allergies or asthma. So is zinc, so is vitamin C, so is vitamin D, so is healing the gut. So um, Sarah, if you have not run a starter kit with your daughter, your child, um, that's exactly what I would do, your son or daughter. I know that you refer to my daughters. So Again, like I would run, I, I mean, I would run the big five uh, with my kids. If, you, if you're not able to afford that, I totally understand. But you'll want to be using omega-3s, vitamin D, vitamin C, zinc, um, potentially a calcium, magnesium. Like these things are really important. I don't know how old your kids are. That's what I'd be looking at. But again, if your child can't breathe, you know, this is serious. And so we'd have to use the inhaler. Uh, we just want to not get to that point. Like that's my goal. Just help kids not get to that point, adults as well. And um, things that open up the air passageways would be things that vasodilate. So breathing in some eucalyptus, going back to breathing techniques. So like in through the nose, out through the mouth, like calming the bodies down, the central nervous system. Um, uh, a cayenne pepper uh, tincture works well, but again, it's a toddler. They're not going to be taking cayenne pepper, I'm sure. But um, hopefully these are all good places uh, to at least get started. Okay. Okay. Mike's up next. Let me just check my time here. Oh, we're doing great on time. Uh, Dr. Brawl, I wanted to know if it's a good idea to take probiotics if you have a mold toxicity. I remember you saying stay away from fermented food when having mold issues. Yeah, this is a great question, Mike. Um, so you want to stay away from mushrooms and fermented foods, um, aged foods, as much as you can when you have a mold issue. And a lot of things that you know might have mold uh, contamination like oats, right? So unless it's been mold tested, there are a few companies that have been mold tested oat wise. So you could use those. So 
Okay, but let's look at bigger picture. <clears throat> the goal really is to complete the CBO protocol, which is 12 weeks. I would do a detox, open up the liver pathways. I would do the CBO protocol. Then I would do the intestinal cleanse. Then I would do the mold protocol. And I would do the intestinal cleanse again. That's what I would do. And during the CBO protocol, you're going to learn how we ramp up. So we slowly basically taper in the probiotics um, starting around week five. And even then, it's only one single strain that's actually beneficial in terms of the immune system. And then after, once we get to week nine, then we add in more of a full spectrum, but it still contains Saccharomyces boulardii. And that still helps with the yeast and, and fungal-based issues. So honestly, I would follow the protocols. That's what I would do. Um, I, would, I would do the CBO protocol, intestinal cleanse, which has the binders. Uh, then the mold protocol, the intestinal cleanse that has the binders again. And if you can use a sauna, I would do that too. And then just follow the probiotic protocol with that. Because after the 12 weeks, when you begin the mold protocol, you'll also be doing the CBO finisher to help seal up that gut wall. Really, really helpful. All right. Great. Let's get to Nicole's question. Can you please make a cookbook? I'm doing the CBO with my six-year-old and it's very stressful and overwhelming. I do not consider her a picky eater and we've been eating healthy for years, but the first 21 days is difficult um, having to pack breakfast and lunch for school. I think you or your wife would be a good resource and would love to hear more about things um, you make your kids. I've never had Facebook, but joined just to get the recipes for your support group. Uh, not a lot for kids. Really enjoy reading the cookbook with my kids, looking at pictures instead of looking at my phone or the recipes on the internet for recipes. You could incorporate recipes for your veggie blend, uh, DNS powder, and have an adult in kids section with different protocol chapters. I will be the first buyer of your book. Thank you for the knowledge you have so graciously share every day. Nicole, thank you very much. I could not begin to tell you the issues we've had with creating a cookbook. It seems like it should be easy. I had, I was working on it with first uh, one of the top chefs from Boston, and she got uh, invite back to the show again. So she's been on it multiple times. You might know who I'm talking about. She's fantastic. I would love to write it with her. She's super busy. She's executive chef for other restaurants. So we kind of let that go. Um, then we started posting to Facebook, which was you know, easy for people to get. Uh, then I started working on this with one of my health coaches. And I mean, believe it or not, their computer crashed. They lost everything that includes all the recipes. This is like, these are true stories. Uh, they're excuses, but still true stories. And we're looking at it once again. So I'm looking at creating a separate cookbook for the detox and a separate one for the um, uh, CBO protocol as well. And that includes some kids. So yes, we're working on it. No doubt about it. It's going to be digital. Uh, to print a book like that in color would probably be $50. If people are okay with paying $50, I'm like, we don't need to make money on a cookbook. Like that's not, that's not the goal of any of this. Um, I give away all my information for free. I mean, that's really what I do unless it's a bigger course. Of course, they took hundreds of hours and I pay a whole team to take care of. Um, anyway, we're working on it for sure. Can't wait to get it done. Uh, I will I will definitely let you know, Nicole, as well. And what's the other thing I wanted to say? But, okay, so what do we do, though? Like, let me at least give you some answers now. So one of my kids are on certain protocols. Um, and again, the CBO protocol isn't super limiting. You have about two dozen fruit that you can still have. You've got your olive oil. Um, you've got uh, avocados for good fats. You've got about three dozen veggies, you've got any protein really that you want. So really what it's eliminating is grains for the first three weeks, um, seeds and nuts, like things. So again, we go pretty in depth with it, um, certain fruits, certain veggies, but sweet potato fries. Most kids love sweet potato fries. You get a sweet potato. Um, they have little cutters that can just cut your potato to make fries out of it. You can just bake them, like literally air fry them or bake them. So then you can add a little bit of sea salt. Kids typically enjoy those. Um, you could do cinnamon with a little bit of, um, a little bit of maple syrup if you wanted to, if they needed a little bit of sweet with some cinnamon for an open face sweet potato. Uh, so many veggies to choose from. You've got fruit that you can have. So there's a fair amount. I mean, there's, there's a fair amount. You have to get a little creative. I know, but it's only for 21 days. Then we start adding more and more back in. All right. Good question though. All right. Let's see. And yes, it's coming. Let's get one more question in, right? Do we have time for one more question? Did I do my six? Let's see. Heidi, Melissa, Sarah, Mike, Nicole. All right, we've got one more. Hey, Dr. Brawl, I'm a new graduated chiropractor in New York, and I've been looking to practice natural medicine here. Your podcast is my favorite. Thank you, Andrew. And I will probably be taking your IHP training soon. 
So Andrew, that I mean, really, as a chiropractor, all that you've learned about the autonomic nervous system and, I mean, IHP would be a huge addition, no doubt about it, um, to your practice. Plus, you'd learn in level two about lab testing, which would be pretty great um, because you can run labs in New York. You just can't um, ship them out necessarily. <laughs> it's very strange how that works outside of your practice. Um, the news showed me that New York and other states may have mandatory uh, vaccines for this particular virus for all citizens without exemptions. I see no way out of it if this happens. And I was wondering what natural protocols you recommend or any advice if people have to get it no matter what. All I can think of is glutathione. Andrew, it's a great question. And many people will choose um, to get the vaccine and some people will choose not to. And I, it's literally, uh, I guess, their choice. Like Whatever they feel is best for them. Uh, everybody has their own opinion on it. Honestly, I don't give my opinion on it because uh, people just lose their minds. Like it, They completely lose their minds. Like You can't talk about certain things. One is politics, one is vaccines, and you know, others are religion, other things like that. And again, like I'm somebody who's just trying to help people. I have no agenda. Um, but what I would say is we know that there are certain um, things in vaccines that um, aren't the greatest. Now, you can say, well, there's benefits to taking it, and the benefits outweigh the, the cons. And, and again, you can make the debate. So here's the thing. like It still has polysorbate 80. It still has certain um, forms of either aluminum or mercury, some type of heavy metal in order to actually get it to bind and to work better and to pass blood-brain barrier. They're using things, not blood-brain barrier, but cellular barriers. They're using things like polysorbate 80. So um, what I would say is this. I'm going to create a page on this, but it is by no means a treatment protocol, a cure, anything like that. I'm just saying, like, what would I do if I was if I had to take this? Like, here's what I would do: is I, I was ever exposed to toxins, this is what I would do. So I'll sh I'll share that with you. It's going to be coming up soon. Um, I can't say that it's in regards to anything because it's not. It's just how to basically boost your immune system if you need to. I'm not talking about vaccines. I'm not talking about viruses. I'm not talking about bacteria. I'm just talking about boosting the, the immune system. That's all. So for me, of course, I'm using my daily foundation protocol level three all the time. I'm going to then use my uh, immune protocol, which is the vitamin C, the vitamin D, and the zinc, but I'm going to double the dosages. And then I'm going to use other items as well, um, such as like a licorice root, and I'm going to use the heavy metal um, detox as well, binders to get those things out of my body. And then I'm going to be doing saunas uh, for a week to two after um, if I was ever exposed to certain toxins. So that's what I would do if I was exposed to certain toxins. Again, not specifically talking about the vaccine, I'm just talking about toxins in general. And I I would do a, I would do the protocol. I would do basically a protocol for the week before. I would do basically a detox to open up my liver pathways. I'd be boosting my immune system for the week before, and then I would be doing this protocol that I'm talking about for the next uh, two to three weeks, just to keep my immune system boosted. That's it. And so it's kind of like that. That's what I would do. And. Um, Again, it's not medical advice or anything like that, uh, but certainly I'd be helping my immune system to deal with the virus or anything else that I just put inside of it. So hopefully that makes sense. All right. Thank you, everyone. Great questions, as always. I would expect nothing less from our community. Uh, hopefully you're tuning in each and every day at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast or on YouTube. It's just my name, Stephen Cabral, Stephen with a PH. Uh, on Instagram, you can find me at the same name, Stephen Cabral. Love to connect and chat with you there, and I'll be back tomorrow answering more of our community's questions. Take care. Did you know that the body really only becomes sick or unbalanced in only two ways? Over time, you become deficient in vital nutrients and you also accumulate toxins internally and from the environment. As those nutrients diminish and you increase your total toxic load, your body then begins to show the first signs of dis-ease. It's actually quite predictable and the good news is that if we know how you began to fill up that proverbial rain barrel, we also know how to empty it to begin the healing process. I was fortunate enough to learn this ancient healing process from my mentor after suffering from debilitating diseases for close to a decade. It was only when I began to implement these techniques did I finally overcome my illnesses and go on to live a life of energy and vitality that I now enjoy. I'd like to share with you now what I discovered after traveling all over the world and how to combine the best of ancient healing wisdom with state-of-the-art science. Allow me to teach you exactly how I've been able to help over a quarter of a million people to empty their rain barrel and begin to transform their body and lives into what they've always hoped they could be. To get your copy of the international bestseller, The Rain Barrel Effect, simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash rain barrel.